So this is the 100th episode of Stillness in the Storms podcast. A podcast that I've done alone, just me, talking into the mic. Sometimes the episodes have been a bit interesting, some of them have been great, some of them have been a bit flat. But they've all been real, and they've all been me. And this episode some people may be expecting a big fanfare a big celebration balloons and whistles but it's not going to be it's going to be something that is deeper and way more important than that and maybe for you or somebody else maybe one day you'll share this episode and it'll literally mean the difference between life and death I'm going to share my story and in particular the story of how suicide has affected me and how I, on more than one occasion, have left this house to go and do it. And one time I was nearly successful. But what I'm going to suggest is, it's going to be a heavy episode, but it's going to be so damn important. So if you're driving the car or you need to focus or you need to, you're listening to this while doing something else, I suggest Pick a different episode. Pick a random one, 30 or 40 or something like that, and go and listen to that one. Leave this one until a time when you can grab a cup of tea or coffee. You can sit down, put on the headphones, and stick with me during the story. Because it's important. It's not a morbid, it's a story of ups and downs, but ultimately successes and the importance and why I'm doing this and why it's so important to me. I'm now 50 years old and to you if you ever think about taking your life or to you if you've ever had a friend that might consider it or to you if you have ups and downs in life. Basically my message is to any human because humans suffer. We want, we expect, we, you know, we have feelings. To not suffer is to not have feelings. And we spend our lives trying to suppress them in some way or try to come to terms with them. This episode is exactly 32 years to September the 1st, 1991, that I broke my neck and ended up severely paralyzed in a wheelchair as I am today. I don't feel anything from my nipples down. It's the easiest way to explain it. I don't feel anything from my, just above my elbows down. My hands are paralyzed. If someone chopped my finger off and used it to, I don't know, get into the bank vault like they do in the movies, I wouldn't bat an eyelid, especially if I didn't see them do it. I don't feel my hands. I don't feel anything. It might affect my body a little bit. I might bleed out. But joking aside, I often see children, whenever I say that, children dig their nails into my hand and I always pretend I'm not watching, but they're fascinated by it. But 30, 32 years ago, September the 1st, 10.31, because I looked at my watch before I dived into the pool and broke my neck. But I want to back up. I want to back up just a few months because it was one of the hardest summers, the Christmas before. I'd just been kicked out of sixth form and... I had to find a new way in life and it's quite a long story. It'll be in my book, but I got a job and I met somebody and I was deeply crazy in love and then it went all wrong and I got my heart broken in a massive way and I never felt pain like it. And when you feel such huge pain, you want to do anything to get rid of the pain. And not only that, I wanted her back. I wanted her to listen to me. I wanted her to see my pain. So I went and bought some paracetamol painkillers. I don't know what they call in the States. And I took one bottle. Didn't really have much effect. I went and bought another one. And in the end, I took three bottles. And I don't remember quite what happened, but I ended up in hospital and after two weeks I went to stay with a friend at Newquay 
I sorted my head out a little bit and we didn't get back together. I'm kind of glad because in those circumstances it would not have worked anyway, probably. So that was my first attempt. I'm glad it didn't work. But then I had the summer, it was a really hot summer. And September the 1st, come along, I went swimming. We went out with all my mates on Sunday evening. We were jumping and diving into the pool like we did many other nights. And I was been a typical male showing off in front of women. I was 18 years old at the time. And I dived into the deep end and I think I caught my head on the edge of the pool as I went in. And it smashed the top of my skull and smashed my neck down against my chest. And I broke C5. And I was instantly paralyzed lying on the bottom of the pool. And they dragged me out of the pool after a while. Because I was the joker. I used to play dead. See how that, see where that got me. And over the coming days, it was a really rough time for me, my parents, family and everybody as to whether I would make it through. I made it through. I come out of hospital a year later and got on with my life. So at this point, I want to go back to when I was 12 years old, just because it's relevant to this podcast. And I can remember getting my mum getting a phone call from somebody on the farm. My granddad had gone missing and we found out a few days later that he shot himself. I, it was 1986, five years before I broke my neck. And it was the first time in my life that I experienced suicide. It was the first real time in my life that I experienced losing somebody. And I don't think I really, I don't think it really affected me at that time. I was kind of close to granddad because I can remember going bird watching with him and everything. But I was 12 and 12, you don't quite understand the world yet. Says me at 50 and I understand it less today than I did then. So those were the two times up until that point that I had experienced myself almost doing it and losing my grand. And then the next time I experienced it was when my daughter lost a good friend at school. I think 11, 12 years old or something like that. I think the inquest came out that it was suicide. And that was particularly difficult seeing what my daughter went through. And I don't want to stay there too much longer because I might get some things wrong and I cannot speak for my daughter and I can't certainly cannot speak for that situation but i i share it because it's all part of the same story it's all part of human suffering and the way we suffer and the way we sometimes deal with it and sometimes we don't deal with it and moving on to i was 40 years old and i just found out that I had been cheated on. And it was particularly difficult. Um, it was a real kick. And over those few days, it was a bit blur. But I can remember writing a letter on the computer and I printing it out on the printer, saying goodbye. I wanted everyone to know I love them. I wanted everyone to know that I didn't want to hurt them. And I didn't want it to be any painful for them but I could not stand the pain so I left and I sat at the top of the bank and I looked down over the bank and I thought do you know what I'm going to get caught up if I drive my wheelchair over there I'm going to end up halfway down and knowing me hanging off something for 24 hours I'm going to really suffer and I didn't want to suffer I'm, I'm a bit allergic to pain something at that moment and this is really important. Something at that moment flipped in my head. And I just thought, what would I miss tomorrow if I did this? Yeah, I was in so much pain. I I was really, really suffering, but what would I miss tomorrow? And I would miss my daughter growing up. I may miss her getting married, going to university, do all these different things. I may miss 
a partner, a new partner one day. I, I may miss all the things because things come and go. And I can remember reversing back from that edge and thinking to myself, I'll give it another few days. I'll give it another few days. And that was enough for me to drive home. Luckily, I got home before anybody seen the letter. I was able to throw it in the bin. I remember stopping at a field, watching rabbits in the corner of the field playing. And I noticed the way they would scarper when they heard something and they would come back and just sit. And I thought that was fascinating. And I came home. As I said, I got rid of the letter. And I was almost in my in my forties, as I said. And I'm here fifty years old now, and it's the one hundredth episode of the podcast, and I wouldn't have done this podcast if I hadn't made a better decision that day. I would not have become mayor of Truro. I would not be talking to you today. I would not experience. Just give me a moment. I would not have experienced my daughter having her first daughter. Yes, yeah, she's pregnant. It's due in January. We had a gender reveal the other day. And think about everything I've done in my life since then. The people I've touched, the people I've helped, the joys I've had. And I'm not crying now because of pain. I'm crying now because... The joy in living does outweigh the pain that comes up sometimes. And I know it's difficult. It's bloody hard. It's hard being paralyzed. It's hard dealing with carers. It's hard being on the city council sometimes. It's hard watching people, seeing people suffer. To be alive is to suffer, the Buddha said. How he was right. Three and a half thousand years ago, we're still not, <laughs> we're still not getting to grips with this shit yet. Because we're human. And I want to move to some stats. Just very briefly. Men between 45 and 65 have the highest rate of suicide. Men overall are three times more likely to commit suicide than women. 74% of all suicides in the UK involve men. And the reasons they say is men look for the more lethal means, you know, such as firearms. And men don't talk about their feelings. When men are anxious and depressed, it comes over as anger or irritability. But sometimes it's sadness, sometimes it's worry. Middle-aged men experience a range of stressors from financial difficulties, job loss, relationships, and health issues. They also sometimes lose parts of their family and things break up. Relationship changes. They may realize middle age that they didn't achieve what they wanted to achieve. And I'm not going down the men route as they're more important and we should look at this. I just want to give... The perspective from my perspective. Any suicide of any age, of any sex, I just these. Give it another couple of days. Just give it another couple of days and talk to someone. And if someone ever comes and talks to you, don't say things like, I'll just think positive. Say, I'm here for you. I care about you. It's okay to feel this way. You don't have to go through this alone. Don't say snap out of it. Don't say you're just looking for attention or anything like that. Don't say to them suicide is selfish. Think of the other people you're hurting. You know. 
You have to remember the braveness in someone coming to you, especially for a man. We're of the generation with the, you know, the the misunderstanding stoicism where we should get rid of our feelings or we should get we suppress them. You know, be a man, don't cry. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> Men cry because men care. Humans feel things deeply. And I've got way more emotional than I thought I would. And I'm sorry. And so my message in this podcast is give it another few days. Think of all the things you might miss out on. Yes, pain is the most horrible thing. And yes, I don't know your reasons. I can only say for me and what I've experienced. I can only ever give my perspective. I'm only ever in my body. But yeah, this shall pass. And I know life's not a meme, but some of the memes have weight and they mean some good stuff. You know, seek help. Go to your doctor, say to somebody, do you know what? Even if you don't think it's that serious and you're just contemplating it, but you're not really contemplating it, just talk to someone, please. You know, share this podcast with them. I don't know if this podcast will help or not. I don't know. But I would not have done so much cool stuff if I drove down that bank that day. Or I was successful when I was 17 years old. If those pills had killed me, imagine all the things I would have missed out on. And yes, it was the most awful times of my life and I would not want to go back through them just for even for a millisecond. But the point is, you may think that it'll end all suffering, it'll do all these things but it'll also end the possibility of all the joys that may come in your life. Yeah, that's my message, and I'm sorry it got so heavy, and I don't know how much I'll edit out. I think I'll edit a lot out, um, because I don't want to make you cry. I don't want to make you emotional. You know, we... Being human is tough, right? You know, we've developed these complex feelings and we haven't developed the tools alongside to go with them. We are working on it. The problem is, like everything, the tide comes in before we're ready for the tide to come in. And that's the same with emotions. The emotions are there before we're ready for them. Humans have evolved this complex set of emotions of pain and and sorrow and sadness and joy and happiness and all of these grief and jealousy all of these things before we've got the tools to deal with them and you could argue we've got the tools to deal with them but we may be talking about this for three thousand years but three thousand years in evolutionary terms for a human or any evolutionary terms is nothing you know that's a that's a blink of an eye it takes a lot longer than that for these things to really work out So I feel for you. You're human. I feel for you. But we're in this together. Let's let's recognize each other's feelings a little bit. Let's recognize, you know, if you're a man, cry sometimes, damn it. You might find it'll make you feel better. So thank you. You've supported me 100 episodes. How incredible is that? How amazing. And I'm not apologizing for bringing this 100th episode to a deep, really powerful message because I think it's really, really important. Um, I've been waiting to do it. I didn't think I would get this emotional, but how? why not? It's what it is. It's who I am. It's who you are. It's who we are. Just thank you. Um, all your support has been awesome. You can get all my links at 
stephenweb.uk. You can support the podcast by going to thankyoustephen.com. The links are in the notes. But that, above all, that leave reviews. That's really helpful. And I love you. Thank you for being there.